Welcome to this episode of Door Hardware Nerds. Today, we're going to be having a conversation about Wi-Fi operators. I'm your host, Mia Merrill, and I'm joined today by Jay Vikas. Jay, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Jay Vikas. I'm Director of Business Development for Norton, and i um, happy to talk to you today about operators. It is my passion and my area of expertise within the co uh, company. Well, thank you for joining us. What unique features can we turn on and off? And you know, what, what does that mean in each feature? Mm -hmm. So in, in the operator world, there's common features like opening speed, sweep speed, latch speed, opening force, power assisted force. Those are all adjustable using the smart device and the Wi-Fi, of course. Um, and then there's latch locations and back check locations and hold open times. Uh, and those are all adjustable. But when you say the word unique, what's unique is mostly the inputs and the outputs are programmable. So there's a series of relays and you could teach them or select them using the device, um, your smart device, to be whatever you want. They could be an emergency interface relay. They could be a latching relay to signal an alarm panel. They could be an input relay from a card reader or a keypad or a, uh, or a push button. So it's the inputs and outputs that are very definable, uh, which on normal circumstances are not. So it's like a, a programmable logic controller using a smart device. That's what's unique. But there's a lot of features that can be configured um, with the device. Okay. What happens when we put out a software update? How does that reach the operator? So another benefit, um, there's not a lot of operators out in the market that have the ability to upgrade the firmware. Um, and this one does. You have two methods of doing it. The easiest one is obtaining the uh, latest on your device and then going to the door and uploading it to the door. And um, that helps us with this planned obsolescence because as we make changes to the firmware um, at the factory at Norton, uh, we could push those out to our preferred installers who then can go out and, and, and add that as a feature maybe on their um, um, annual maintenance agreements to the customer. So uh, physically Wi-Fi at the door location within 20 feet, new settings are uploaded. Oh, wow, that's great. Uh, does this allow us to do any diagnostics in the field on our operators? Yeah, so interesting too, because um, that's not something that would be normally uh, easy to obtain. Um, certainly some manufacturers have done it by reading LCD display screens, but this one gives you, upon connection, it gives you the serial number, the firmware version, uh, the hardware version, uh, a cycle count, how many times the unit has been um, turned on and off. Um, in all of the current settings that are in the unit, the door opening time, the uh, closing time, the door position, which is an advantage to have because you'll, you could just visually see you, that you're within compliance. Right? And then also uh, the power status, the temperature at the, uh, underneath the cover of it. And then also errors in any type of uh, incident that occurred, maybe the door was forced closed or forced open uh, appear in a code. So actually quite a few, um, status reports available on one screen during connection. Interesting. Now, what if I'm programming a bunch of doors and I want them to all have the same settings? Do I have any benefit with this? Yeah, so it, it is common for a national account customer to want all of their doors to be configured exactly the same. Um, that standardization, I, I want my, my sweep, my latch, my opening um, to be identical no matter where I go and what building. And um, once you program one door, um, you could save those settings, go to the next door, and then simply upload the settings from a file on your smart device. So you could program multiple doors, um, all that individually, door A, B, C, and D, by making the Wi-Fi connection and uploading the settings, but you'll be assured that they're all exactly the same. So oh, wow. another benefit of the um, um, method of programming that we engineered. That's great. So how does this make daily operations safer for everybody? Um, in a number of uh, ways. One is this, the standardization. Um, two, all settings um, have typically been subjective uh, to the installer. Um, the code is very specific with the opening forces and times, but it is difficult for a technician to have a force gauge and, uh, and, a, and a stopwatch. So I think what we all would do is tend to make assumptions um, and maybe um, 
that is eliminated. So now we know that the door force, the door speed, the door hold open times are all a standard. And remember when you use the initial window, uh, we do an auto tune or an auto learn. So we automatically set the operator to be compliant automatically. Also, there are some cases I would add where you can have a door stay open longer or close faster and it is acceptable to the code, but there's some criteria that is the traffic must be trained or, or something, there's an exception. So uh, if the installer makes that selection, we can open up a window that says something to the effect of, uh, do you know, do you agree that um, it, you're, you're making a, a parameter setting outside of the code? And here in the individual could say, I agree, okay, I understand. So um, for all those reasons, it's just an inherently, um, it was all, they were already safe platforms, automatic doors to begin with, but it just makes a safe platform um, even safer. Yeah, that's great. All right, anything else you would like to share with us today? Yeah, I, I think uh, when we talk about um, the terms revolutionary versus evolutionary, I think this is a combination of both because um, the concept of programming using a phone was somewhat revolutionary, but our approach to it was evolutionary. So. Uh, in the earlier version, there was a potentiometer and an LCD display screen, and then also the ability to program it using Wi-Fi. So it wasn't Wi-Fi exclusive. You could still program it the old method. Uh, but going forward, I think it will become um, revolutionary in that you know, most likely most other manufacturers will follow this lead, and it'll probably become one of the only ways to program the unit, and there'll be more functionality added um, as we advance. Uh, and add other features and other safety uh, methods. It'll just become the, 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 the de facto standard going forward. So I'm happy to see this in the portfolio and being expanded throughout it. Yeah, I mean, the convenience, the failure proofing, you know, you're automatically meeting codes. Like I can't imagine why there would be an expansion around this um, throughout the industry. I, I agree. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us today, Jay. We are so glad to uh, spend a little bit of time with you. Um, so thank you, that. thank you for uh, thank you for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Yeah. So below, you will find links to the Norton Door Controls website, where you'll be able to find all the information you need about what Jay and I talked about today. If you're interest, interested in operators, but you don't know who to reach out to, I've also included a link to find your local DSS office. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for joining us.